Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Chris here again. Welcome back to Handheld Legend. You know, when playing and working with Game Boy consoles or any kind of handheld gaming devices, the most important thing is to be able to see the game you're playing and having a nice, clean and crisp display. There's something we like to call bench testing, which is a great first step, especially when working with these new high quality LCD screens that are commonly in these Game Boy modding kits. And there's actually a couple easy methods for doing so. Let's go check some out. Today we'll use our two LCD kits, a Phillips head screwdriver, a tri-ring screwdriver, some kind of prying tool, and a pair of tweezers. For the sake of this video, this is just a loose installation so we can get to showing you how to test the LCD screen. Let's start with a quick disassembly of our Game Boy Advance. We're removing the seven screws from the back shell and pulling it off. Then remove the three screws holding down the motherboard. Carefully disconnect the LCD ribbon cable and remove the motherboard out of the shell. Then lay out all of your parts to keep the process simple and organized. So let's lay out all of our parts we're gonna use. Starting with the LCD itself and the ribbon cable, we're gonna connect the tiny ribbon tab from the LCD to the ribbon cable itself. Then we're gonna connect the other side of the ribbon cable, depending on whether it's a 32 pin or 40 pin board, right into the slot of the motherboard. Using a pair of tweezers will help us pinch down the two clamps to hold the ribbon in place. Now when we put the motherboard into the half shell, make sure the black cartridge slot is down and make sure the battery contacts coming off the board are straight and not bent anywhere so it fits securely. Now hold the board and shell together so it doesn't fall out and then gently put the batteries in, put the cover on, and then power on either with your fingers or with a tweezer to help you get the switch across. Doing this test is great for both kits as it provides a very simple solution for casual modders and for anyone that may not have a lot of special equipment on their hands. When you look at your screen, you can look for a nice crisp clean box, clear display, no dead pixelation, and you know that you can move on now to the next steps in your modding project. If you have discoloration or bad pixelation, we know that we can stop right here and address the issue at hand. We'll talk a little more about that later on. Now let's get back to a couple more advanced methods that require some more additional equipment. All right, we're gonna start with the V2 kit. When taking the parts out of the V2 kit, put your adhesive and jumper wires aside because you'll need them later when you actually do the full installation of the LCD. If you don't know how to do that just yet, you can check out our V2 and V3 installation videos that are on our YouTube channel. Next, we're gonna use a variable power supply with alligator clips, attaching the negative clip which is the black one, to the negative terminal, and attaching the positive clip, the red one, to the positive terminal. We actually carry a portable version of these alligator clips that are simply powered by two AA batteries. Lastly, on your power supply, make sure that the voltage is set to 3.2 volts. Attach the small LCD ribbon to the flex cable and make sure you use caution when proceeding. Don't force the connector in if it feels misaligned. Simply take it right off and try it again. And next, attach the other side of the flex ribbon cable to the motherboard and push the two tabs down to fasten the cable into the motherboard slot. Now, it's time to power on the console and visually inspect your new IPS LCD screen. We're looking for dead pixels, white spots, backlighting issues, scratches, and any other kinds of defects. Now for our V3 kit. The process is almost identical to the V2 kit, with the exception that the flexible ribbon cable is replaced by the printed circuit board. Again, save the adhesive and jumper wires for the actual installation when you're ready to proceed with that. Next is the process of connecting our board to our ribbon cable, which is almost identical to how we did it in the V2 kit. Again, use caution when proceeding and don't force the connector if it feels misaligned. Then insert your LCD ribbon into the board as shown. And then insert the other side into the motherboard and push the two tabs down to fasten the ribbon cable into the motherboard slot. 
And again, using the variable power supply with the alligator clips, pull your touch sensors off to the side so it's not to create a short when testing and to verify the functionality and responsiveness of the color and brightness features that are exclusive to this V3 kit. Now let's power on and verify. Again, we're gonna look for the same types of defects, dead pixels, bad spotting, bad lighting, scratches, etc. And again, it would be best to remove the protective film to inspect and test the brightness and color functions as well. Now that we've shown you some different methods on testing the LCD, let's show you some issues that can arise, such as defects and manufacturer problems. You see those little tiny squares on the screen here? Those are dead pixels, and we hate dead pixels. They can be a result of poor quality control from the manufacturer or can result due to improper installation over time. For example, there may be some pressure points happening inside the console. A dead pixel could appear over time after a couple uses. Here's another example. We've reseated the ribbon and LCD here multiple times. The Game Boy is clearly getting power, but this screen is just saying, nah, I ain't working today. A completely dead screen is where we would want to inspect the small ribbon cable, check to see maybe it got torn in the process, but it's also possible that there could be a defect in the flex ribbon cable itself too in giving power to the screen. And it's as simple as that. We hope this video today was really helpful in understanding how fragile and sensitive these LCDs can be and why testing phases are really helpful and important in modding projects. How'd your screen come out, Christian? I think Lord. it came out great and I could see every little pixel on Samus's head. Patience is key here. Thanks again for stopping by everyone. We'll see you next time on Handheld Legend.